Hello my friend, it is I, Vadim. I see way too many people spend way too much money on PC parts when there is no need to. I'm talking about hundreds sometimes, hundreds of dollars. And today I decided that um, it is time to address that. I want to show you how this process would probably usually go for uh, an unexperienced PC part picker and uh, then I will show you how I do it and we'll see at the end how much money we can save and I'll show you what kind of nice things you can actually buy on the amount that we saved or you can just save that money you know invest it in something else so let's go let's pretend that you want to buy a Ryzen 7 5800X CPU and uh, build your system around it so you go ahead and just add it to your basket. No thanks. And then you're presented with this window with like, you know, uh, suggestions. And you see like, oh, one terabyte SSD? Yeah, okay, I want that. And uh, maybe then you look at this uh, RAM. Y you may be, you know, not very experienced in, in these things and, uh, you know, store suggests you get this RAM for this PC and you're like, okay, uh, let's do that. So you add it to your cart as well. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good idea. It is not a good idea because the store wants you to buy. The more you buy, the better for them. So don't do that. But let's say you did that. Okay, so next thing, you need a motherboard. You need an X570 motherboard for it. Uh, you've heard that it's the best you can get, that you know, high-end CPU requires a good motherboard. Yeah, it's true. You don't want to get like the cheapest crap you can find. And uh, you look through these, uh, Gigabyte, mm, maybe, maybe it's not your uh, cup of tea and then you come across something that you like for example this msi x570 gaming it looks nice it has gaming in the in the title and you are a gamer so you are building this pc for gaming and it's not the most expensive one either because have a look there's like motherboards for six hundred dollars four hundred dollars three hundred and twenty three and this one's only 220 so yeah let's say okay yeah this this works it's this is okay and you go for it what else we need a power supply and let's say that you want to get a 750 watt power supply uh, you are you know presented with a few choices and you're probably thinking like oh Okay, so this one is uh, gold and this one is bronze. Gold is better than bronze. So, you know, maybe you go for this one. Or maybe you go for this one. You can see that, you know, the prices vary by a lot. Well, let's not go for the expense for the more for the more expensive one. Let's go for something cheaper. For example, this EVGA power supply. By the way, EVGA they make very good power supplies. We also need a cooling solution. So let's say that you need a CPU cooler and you want yourself a, a liquid cooler. You go into this section and you look for these. Oh, Kraken. A lot of good reviews. You know, looks good. Add it. So for the PC case, let's choose just the my regular, uh, you know, w w what I regularly recommend is this Fantex P400A. And um, I'm us usually recommending to get this RGB model just because it has three fans pre-installed. And they are very high quality fans. Let's have a look at what we've got. So as you can see, summary is fourteen hundred dollars for all of this we have everything we need pc case motherboard power supply processor 32 32 gigabytes of ram you know cpu cooler ssd 
This is Gen 4, PCI, Exp PCI Express Gen 4. Nice things, right? And they cost you $1,400. If you ask someone like me to help you pick your parts or do a lot of research yourself, then you will find a different set. It will be just as good in performance, so you're not gonna lose any FPS. Well, maybe like a couple of FPS here and there, but nothing major. And you will also get high quality parts, not worse than here. And I actually prepared a list like that. It's called 5800X value. Let's have a look at it. How much do, does it cost? Just over 1000. So there you go. That's $400 you're going to save if you realize that you don't need an X570 motherboard. You can buy this one. B550 A Pro. It's a very nice board. It will support even the 16 core 5950X, no problem. Power delivery is strong on this one. You can pick, you know, a better option. Uh, it's gonna cost you like 10, 20 dollars more, but it's still a lot cheaper than, you know, X570 board that we've looked at previously, also by MSI. What else? You don't really need the gold power supply. Bronze is plenty fine, especially if you get a good brand like EVGA, their bronze power supplies are top notch, so you can save here as well. Next thing, if you are doing gaming and just gaming, you don't need 32 gigabytes of RAM. Get 16, get the cheaper one, you know, latency 18 is fine, 3600 megahertz is fine and it's a lot cheaper. Do you really need that PCI Express very expensive SSD? No, you don't. We've looked at the performance for like loading times in games previously on my channel and uh, we found out that, you know, it's not worth it. Sometimes you're not gaining anything at all and sometimes you're loading like a couple of seconds faster it's not worth hundreds of dollars. It's not, it's not even worth anything extra. So yeah, just get yourself the good old PCIe 3.0 SSD. This is the one that I usually recommend and it's a good price. It says that it's on sale, but uh, it's, that's, that's the usual price for it nowadays, really. And the last one is the CPU cooler. If you are not after a silent experience, then, you know, you can get away with buying just an air cooler. Just a regular one like this one here. And save a lot of money. What can you do with that money? Let me show you. When we saved about $400, you can get yourself one of the best monitors. 1440p Gigabyte M27Q. 107 Hertz, IPS, all the bells and whistles, you know, $360 when not on sale. This right here is why you need to do research, is why you really should, you know, ask someone who knows what they're doing to help you out. And you can afford nicer things. That's it for today, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and until next time.